Hi, today I'm here with um, our wonderful practitioner in acupuncture, uh, Master Tien, Phoebus Tien. Um, and uh, today we wanted to have a chat to kind of understand who is this great person, how he came to be inside Gazelle House and what's his take on acupuncture. Um, first of all, I wanted to say a few words for myself. When I met um, Phoebus, it was very much kind of slow unveil of the several <laughs> layers that uh, for me he holds. And um, he, he blew me away with his knowledge and um, the depth of knowledge often that some people don't even know acupuncture has. And, um, but also his character and his at times sarcastic and wonderful humor. So, <laughs> so it's, a, it's, it's a wonderful, interesting um, a person and we're delighted that he has joined the team and has been part of our family for a um, few months now. Um, so just to start off with, uh, who are you as a person? I think it would be interesting, just a bit more where you come from and what's inside. <laughs> Uh, first, I'm a Capricorn. <laughs> that's very important. That's yes. important to mention. <laughs> yeah, that's why sometimes it's a little bit difficult to explore me. Uh -huh. And even for myself, it's difficult to explore myself. Who am I? You're I a dark know. horse, that's what we call you here. <laughs> I don't know. I come from China. Yeah, I started in China. I worked in China in a hospital for two years. And I had uh, been offered a job in a uh, university to teach in London. Uh, that's the reason I come to the UK. So, um, and now I'm in Gazeli. I'm, I'm very happy. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I love <good>. this place. <laughs> that's you know? good. Yes. Yeah. And then, so how did your path lead on to kind of acupuncture and how did you become a practitioner? When I was uh, little, uh, I was born in high altitude place, uh, it's very close to Tibet. Mm -hmm. So I had the uh, uh, bronchitis for a long time, mm -hmm. and I was, re I, I was really ill. And my mother was a Western medicine nurse. We didn't believe it in Chinese medicine at the, at the beginning. Then my mother finally decided, let's try something else when I was 12, because I was so ill. And it was like a magical thing. It uh, changed my life totally. Then uh, my constitution was changed uh, totally. At, after that uh, acupuncture and herbal treatment session, and I just feel so much better. Then I decided to to learn more about the transplants and acupuncture. That's how I started to uh, get into this way. Mm -hmm. Kind of your journey. Yes, yes. And then your degree and everything was um, back in China. Uh, yes, uh, actually I started to learn Chinese medicine before I actually went to the university because uh, my, my mother knows someone uh, and uh, I just followed uh, that guy mm -hmm. for a couple of years uh, and I, and I uh, went to the university and started in China. It's good when it's passed down through kind of generations and yes, through masters yeah. that you acquire this knowledge. Yes. Um, and what did you think about uh, generally, how it's like in London? Is it very different? Do people understand acupuncture, you think? Or is it still kind of this uh, vague term that people think they understand but they don't really get the full grasp of? I met a lot of uh, open-minded people in London, which is uh, brilliant. And uh, for my, my partner, he's a, a, a scientist and uh, for for these for them this is uh, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> they don't believe in acupuncture, but uh, I try uh, uh, I tried a few times, and it worked. Yeah. Uh, so I think people can accept it. it, it it's it's good because uh, in Western countries uh, people know more about themselves. They explore yes. more about themselves about the the, the feelings and uh, something deeper. And I think now more than ever, like you said, people are, they're ready, they're open-minded yeah. to combine, I think, medicine with uh, alternative medicine, yeah. you know, and I think that acupuncture has got such rich history yeah. in which it's proven over and over again, yeah. like you have proved to yourself as well, but, you know, historically it's, it's an absolute kind of incredible yeah. um, practice. And skillfully combining it, I think, what's exciting within the house is you working alongside other practitioners as mm -hmm. well to kind of create this bespoke but 360 type of approach. So mm -hmm. you really can um, reach out to quite a lot of different 
um, let's say, to cure different symptoms or yeah. to even for things like energy, right? As yeah. simple as kind of support and maintenance of someone in a busy life. Yeah. You could even serve as this, you know, I would say like a fountain of energy mm -hmm. internally. Is mm -hmm. that the correct way to kind of explain it? Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And then would you um, say that if someone is scared of needles, because it often <laughs> happens, because I am, I know I am, and when I came to you first, I uh, never actually tried acupuncture. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it is a scary thing to think that needles are being, you know, stuck in your body. And I talk to a lot of people that are a little bit taken aback. It is hair thin, it is very, very thin needle. Yeah. But also I think, is it true that the skill you put it in with is is what makes the difference or yes definitely you are uh, you have a, a for those most... that are basically scared <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> please <laughs> please you answer <laughs> yes sometimes it does hurt a little bit but uh, if you do it correctly it doesn't hurt too much yeah, yeah it shouldn't be a problem and uh, feeling a uh, feeling of fear of sharp things is a human nature it's yeah purely normal <laughs> But I think also the important thing is once you're in the room, it's, it's your common nature that's kind of, you know, it's a case and out, you know, kind of relax and you start the treatment, which I think also helped me at least. So for those that are a bit worried, you shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> so what else would you like to add kind of to wrap this up from yourself? Um, I think to the people that that know, I think, acupuncture and follow you and come to you, I think, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's their kind of open-minded, they understand it. But for those that have possibly never considered it, mm -hmm. what would you say, kind of, your almost, like, tips to how to apply it into everyday life for those that are looking for just this support, you know? Mm -hmm. What would you say? Well, acupuncture is, uh, is very good for well-being because uh, as we grow older, we also have sort of problems, and uh, these problems you can't actually deal with with, with medicine, like uh, the muscle tension, posture, th these sort of things, uh, you need to fix it. And uh, another thing is uh, a lot of people don't realize uh, they're not well, they just get used to it. Like some girls, uh, um, they have painful period, uh, uh, sometimes I ask the patients, uh, do you have period pain? They say, no, I don't have period pain, because I take pills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not, not true. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, you still have pain, but you're just taking pills. Uh, that doesn't mean you don't have pain. You're just uh, taking pills to cover it. Uh, so all the things uh, we just don't realize, it, it's not, not healthy. And uh, like, for example, some people sweat in the evening, uh, when they get up, oh, okay, the pillow is wet. When they sleep, yeah. yes. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a major thing in trans medicine. It's a big problem. But uh, some people say, oh, I've always been like that. It's normal for me. But yeah. for, for us, it's, it's not. It's I think once you told me that it's like, you know, when, when there is a pain or when it, there is a symptom, it's your body trying to tell you yes. that there is something wrong. Uh, but often because of, I don't know, the speed of life or something, you know, it's just you ignore these things until it becomes you know, a fully developed, God forbid, illness or yeah, something yeah. that you then, you know, need to take drastic uh, measures. So I think maybe it's almost, even, maybe it's almost coming in for a chat to see where you are, I think would be a good start. Yes, definitely. And I think just to, for everyone, advice is not to ignore the symptoms. Not, yes. even if they're not symptoms, even if they're little signals. Yes. I think that's probably... Just explore the underlying issues. Yes. That's what, what we deal with, the underlying issues. Yes, exactly. To make you stronger. Yes. And fitter and go for 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> That's our aim. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Um, and do stay in, do stay tuned because um, we're going to do lots of this type of series and interesting chats. And we're going to do a few more with Tian on different subjects. Thank you. Thank you.